Cubs have rolled. They've won three in a row. Seiya Suzuki, is he the best player on the team? We're going to talk about that. Javier Assad getting it done in the rotation and more. Welcome to the Cubs baseball channel. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and hit the bell so you know when we're live. We're going to talk some Cubs baseball right here. So don't go anywhere. Let's get this thing started. Here's your invitation to the channel. What do you say, everybody? Cubs rolling and uh, my brand new partner over here. You're going to know him on the channel, Anthony Pasquale, who is a lifetime Cubs fan and uh, lives on the north side and uh, went to Illinois and jumps on with us. What's up, brother? Welcome to the channel. Yeah, Mick. Thanks for having me. Definitely a good game to start with my uh, my first episode here. <laughs> Cubs rolling. Uh, have to take care of these Rockies, but they're doing the job already. Yeah, let's let's talk about it because it really is exciting uh, what we're seeing right now with uh, the Cubs. And I and I'm trying to figure this out. You know, who is the best player on the Cubs team? Right. Uh, Lost the first two, won the next three. And I feel like it's say a Suzuki. I know he had a big spring and the way that he ended last year. Uh, do you, what do you think? I mean, is he the best player on the team plays great defense? Yeah, I like say a lot. And I think he, he kind of has to be eventually. Um, I think you head into this year with, um, Bellinger, obviously in the three hole and you expect him to kind of continue what he did last season. But I think we already know what his ceiling is. The cool thing about say a Suzuki is that we're not at that ceiling yet. And it's already pretty great. I think obviously you'd expect Bellinger to take at least a small step back from what he did last year. Yeah. Say it keeps moving forward. So I think him and Morel are both kind of in that ballpark. And I think I give the edge to say just a little bit because Morel lacks on the defensive end. Say it definitely makes up for it. Yeah. I mean, then that's the question with Morel. Um, and I saw a clip today from uh, Lawrence Holmes and uh, Dan Bernstein show. And, and, you know, Dan's like, Hey, I think that uh, they need to, end this experiment you know and it's like we're game four you know and it's like and i and he's talking about morale having trouble at third base and he is having trouble at third base last night he was the dh but it look guy hit a bomb in the game he he makes just solid contact he's batting like over 400 uh, but at the same time at third base it is uh it, it's almost a wash sometimes because he's so bad defensively right now, but he's so good at the plate. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wonder if eventually it's just going to click and he's going to figure it out and we just need to be patient. Yeah. And it's something, obviously he's kind of learning that position still. I think he came up as a second baseman and third base is obviously it still looks a little bit foreign to him, but if you could shore him up at third base and get a better bat in at the DH, cause obviously if he's DHing and magicals at third, you kind of suffer a little bit of offense where you make up for it on defense. Mm -hmm. Obviously not last night. Madrigal had a really nice night at the plate, uh, but Garrett Cooper also went yard and that's a guy I think they'd like to have in the lineup a little bit more. Obviously Bush is going to get those starts against righties at first. So Cooper can only really designated hit. And if you have, Madrigal at third, you need Morel in that lineup, and that kind of leaves Cooper outside. And then once Wisdom comes back, Wisdom on the outside, it, you, you're going to have to decide offense, defense. And I think um, Council will figure it out eventually. Yeah, I, I like Madrigal. I always have. I mean, even when he came up with the White Sox, because he's such a good contact hitter. And he had quietly one of the biggest hits in the game. You know, it was early on. There's a guy at third. He's got two strikes on him. And then he lines a single in to left to score a run. And the floodgates opened after that. He made a, an incredible diving play at third base. He's so good defensively. The problem that I have with him is staying healthy. But I love the fact that he is an absolute contact hitter. And in this day and age, you just don't have a lot of guys that can do that. Yeah, and obviously the, the play you're talking about, he robbed KB of a hit, so it was a little current <laughs> Cub on former Cub crime there. But <laughs> no. you talk Poor about KB. the uh, 
uh, the contact. And that's something that I, I kind of have thought Nico Horner has lacked a little bit early. He's been swinging yeah. and missing a lot early on the season. Um, and, and that was kind of the whole thought process behind getting rid of Baez, Rizzo, Bryant, Schwarber, is you wanted to go toward contact. And this team kind of slipped a little bit into that strikeout walk type of team last year. I think Hap's a guy like that. And Horner's one that you expect to be, you know, really putting the ball in play a lot. But Magical definitely does it and, and does it often. And that's something you'll always take in your lineup. Yeah, look, Nico's a good player, contact hitter. Uh, I said, I told him, I mean, before he even played in the big leagues, um, and he was surprised, remember that first time, to get to the big leagues. I'd watched yeah. him play, and I said, you you remind me of Rhino. And it wasn't that I was saying that he was going to be a Hall of Famer, but just the way that his shoulders are, the way that he moves, mm-hmm. he was playing shortstop at the time, but I just, just saw that kind of that, like, um, there's just a presence that Rhino has body wise, the way he moves. And, uh, it's almost like he's mechanical, but smooth at the same time. And then a contact hitter that hits a lot of line drives. And I thought that eventually Nico would turn those line drives into home runs being at Wrigley. And that's something that could happen as he gets stronger, but he had a terrible spring. And it almost feels like it just it just hasn't clicked for him yet. And now he's going to be dealing with days like today where it's freezing cold and snow and, you know, who knows if they even play. Um, but it, it, it gets it's tough to kind of get into a groove when the weather's like that. But I, I certainly hope that it happens soon. And I think that it will. I mean, I think eventually he's going to start squaring balls up. But, you know, if if not, that's the second base spot is definitely a spot that the Cubs have a lot of depth in the minor league system. Not saying I'm trying to push Nico out, but I'm just right. like it's a spot that the Cubs are, are loaded, you know. And so um, it, it, it long term, they're going to be fine. Now, Javier Assad got the start six innings. And I just feel like he is one of the most underappreciated guys on the roster. It was like another brilliant outing, you know, in the cold. Hey, I don't need your sleeves, you know. And, you know, we're being from Tijuana, right? Like, it's not like they're having a whole lot of cold weather games down there. But he he made it up through the system. He wasn't a prospect for say. He just event. He just pushed them to the point where they had to throw him in, and it's like I always feel like they're expecting him to fail, or people are expecting him to fail, and he just succeeds. And maybe it's because there's guys on base, but he works great with traffic. He always seems to just make the pitch when he needs to, and he did that again last night. Yeah, I love Javier Assad. I think that that two seamer that runs away from lefties mm-hmm. and in on righties is such a nasty pitch that he's been using. It, and he looked like he used it quite a bit last night. But the thing I like about him and pretty much this entire Cubs rotation, Hendricks, Imanaga, Steele when he's healthy, they might not strike you out a ton, but they're not going to put you on with a walk. I mean, Assad only had one last night. Uh, Imanaga had zero two games ago. And it's something that, you know, they always talk about walks are one of the most killing things for a pitching staff. Mm -hmm. This Cubs team can keep on avoiding walks. It's something that, you know, starts at the top, but is such a good thing for this pitching staff. And you're right. I think it seems like a lot of people expect Assad to fail and eventually end up in that swing bullpen role Mm -hmm. that um, Hayden Wesneski probably ends up in. Um, but it seemed like Council and even Ross before were so high on Wicks and Wisniewski and not to take anything away from those guys. But you put Assad in and he just gets out. It doesn't have to look pretty, but at the end of the day, six innings, no runs and just one walk. That's as good as outing as you're going to get. Yeah. And and he did that last year. Remember right. when, when um, Stroman went on the IL and he had to slide into the rotation? He did a good job. Like I was surprised, honestly, and I think this was one of the biggest mistakes that the Cubs made down the stretch last year was when they took uh, they took Assad out of the rotation and they put Marcus Stroman in. And Stroman, Smiley back in, too. That was yeah. Smiley was way better in the bullpen late and Assad mm-hmm. was a stud in, in the rotation. Yeah. I, I didn't get that move, you know, and I've, honestly, that's probably why the Cubs have Craig council now and not David Ross. So the, you know, I, I'm not throwing it all on Rossi, you know, it, but it, some of that stuff you wonder, you know, how that translates over, but uh, Assad is just, he's a bulldog, man. I mean, you know, he, he's a bulldog and um, 
I, the fact that he they they take him out because you have to take him out, but he's a guy that is like old school too, where you feel like, hey man, I could go seven, I could go eight. You know, remember the game against the Reds last year? He's in the ninth inning and they pull him out and like, you know, and they end up losing two to one. You know, he's dominating yeah. the game. Uh, but he he's old school in that in that capacity. And then the other part of it is if you didn't invest anything in him, right? You you got him, you brought him up through your system. You didn't really think he's a prospect. You still think he's a swing man. Why not not let the guy pitch? You know, throw the analytics out and just let this guy get, you know, deep in the games. Now, we're too early in the season for that now. I'm not saying today. I'm saying then, you know. I I really think that he's an asset, though. And he makes the pitching staff a much deeper pitching staff. Hanging out with you guys on the Cubs baseball channel after uh, the Cubs were a winner last night. They've won three in a row. And one of the guys that I, I I'm just not sold on yet it's is Jose Quas right I just don't feel like he's reliable I just don't feel like he's a guy who really brings a lot of value unless he's maybe a guy that comes in and just you just put him out there in in games like that where it's a blowout but I mean maybe he can get locked in but we had high hopes for this guy and it just doesn't feel like he's going to. Uh, be someone that we can count on the Cubs. Yeah. Maybe he kind of turns into that guy you bring in when you're up 10 or you're down 10 type of pitcher, but he, he looked so wild to, last night. He had a few hit by or a hit by pitch and a walk. I think um, obviously gave up the only runs that the Cubs gave up last night. And he was a guy that after they acquired him from the Royals that David Ross worked all the way down to the grit last year. He had yeah. so many appearances down the stretch, but he, was sort of reliable. He got a lot of outs and he wasn't extremely ineffective, but had kind of a rough spring. Honestly, he came down to the last few, I think to get that last roster spot in the bullpen. Um, him and Luke little were uh, the last two guys that joined the bullpen. Honestly, I was pretty impressed with little tonight. I know they were up by 10 when he pitched, but little's a guy that I think could make a big difference in this bullpen and, and maybe even take the role that you thought Quas was going to have. Yeah, and well, that's what they're hoping. I mean, a six foot eight left hander. The 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 thing for Little has always been just uh, control and command. Yeah, you know, because mm -hmm. he's got great stuff. You watch him, and he walks the bases loaded, and then he strikes the next three guys out. Um, he throws a lot of wild pitches. There's pass balls, but then when he's on, he's he's a guy that you don't want to have to face. He just has that intimidation, like Randy Johnson when he's on the mound. Uh, he, in, you know, all he's got to do is come in and pitch an inning here or there and throw strikes. And you can see that there's a process happening for him as he improves, as he gets more experienced. So maybe it is, you know, I think he's got the potential to be in those high leverage situations and, and, you know, get big outs, uh, in games that matter, you know, but uh, these kind of games are really good too, just to let him get the experience of being out there and, and find success. Yeah. You kind of have to figure out what he's going to be before you throw him into those high leverage situations, but he definitely has the mold of a guy that can get you big outs late in games. And and obviously it was late in the game last night, not necessarily big outs, but he looked good. Well, the weather isn't looking good for today's game. Um, it's, I guess it's time for a snow out or two, right? <laughs> yeah, not, not exactly what you expect. I know they say April showers. They, they usually aren't talking about snow showers, but that's what it looks like on the north side today. Um, obviously, I work at a golf course. Not working today, as you can assume, just because of the, the snow. Um, but that, that kind of snowy, slushy, sleety mix is, is going to make it tough to get a game in tonight. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, it may be good for the Cubs as well. You know, we were expecting Ben Brown to be the starter uh, in the game. But, you know, now if it does get snowed out tonight, then all of a sudden, you know, you can kind of flip that rotation over in that spot and, and, and get somebody in that area that has more experience, because I'm guessing that's what they would do instead of just like pushing that guy back. I mean, should, they would probably go with someone that has more experience, but I guess you got to get there first. I mean, anything can happen. The grounds crew does a great job when it comes to getting the field ready. Uh, but I mean, it was cold and windy last night, rainy, you know, and then and today it's going to be like cold and snowy and like 30 something. Colorado's so bad right now. 
I mean, they stink. They're probably praying to God that it gets snowed out so they can leave. Yeah, and I think JD said on the broadcast that both teams have off days on Thursday, so they could technically make it up on Thursday if they needed to. Oh, wow. um, but I, I think you're right. Colorado wants to get out of Chicago. I think they probably thought on opening day – that it wasn't going to get any worse. And then last night it got worse. And today, if they play, it's going to be even worse than the last two days. Um, but yeah, like you said, I think Ben Brown would probably be the guy we see pitch tonight. Um, that's a guy you saw a lot in Tennessee. Obviously, if it gets canceled today and they don't decide to make it up tomorrow, you'd probably go for some of those veterans in the uh, Dodger series over the weekend. But what do, what do you like about Ben Brown? What what can we expect from Ben Brown if he does pitch? Yeah, I mean, we saw his debut and, you know, it was like um, a lot of nerves, you mm -hmm. know, but he's a hard thrower, with the slider and curveball. Both of them are pretty good. Sometimes his, you know, his command isn't great, but he's gotten better as he's progressed. Morrell also made a couple errors behind them or, they, you know, they weren't ruled errors, but they were, you know, plays that they should have made. And then, yeah. hit, and then the wheels came off after that. But uh, I, I think he's got the potential to be a, a good pitcher. I, I don't, you know, I look at Kate Horton as kind of the, you know, the best of the minor league pitchers that the Cubs have. And I'd put Ben Brown in that, you know, that next group, you know, uh, I'd say Cade by himself and then Ben Brown, like at the top of that next crew of guys. And, and he, he throws hard. Uh, he competes, you know, he's a guy who looked so good in spring. And it was like, maybe the light bulb has come on because he mm -hmm. had so many, it didn't just have to strike everyone out, but he got pitched to contact outs as well. And I think he's going to need those to get past five innings in the big leagues because he's he's a pitcher when he struggles, throws a lot of pitches. So uh, it's coming. It may be better for him if this thing gets snowed out and he has a little bit more time to kind of just adjust to yeah. the weather and everything else. But uh, at the same time, I'm sure he's itching to get back out there again. Yeah, absolutely. I know that that first game for him over the weekend was obviously a little bit rough and the Cubs took a, a beating from Texas in that one. But still, you had to like a little bit of what you saw. And you're right, though. Once he starts struggling, he's a guy that can really bump the tally in the pitch count. But if he can keep that pitch count low and, and just stay in the zone, he's a guy I think can make a big difference in the rotation or in the bullpen wherever he slots in once they're all healthy. No doubt. Well, how, how did your first show go? It was a lot of fun. I uh, I always feel like even though, um, you know, we have to be a little bit brief. There's always so much to talk about with this team. So I'm I'm excited to to keep hopping on and keep this thing rolling. Yeah, and I can't wait until Friday to get that uh, first watch party. Uh, you know, when the Cubs play the Dodgers, you know, getting on here, watching the game with everyone else, and seeing what people think about it and get their opinions and give share ours. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, and uh, we're going to do that every Friday day game throughout the entire uh, Wrigley field schedule season. And yeah, and then it's going to be great to have you on and hanging out, man. A couple of uh, lifelong Cubs fans just kind of grinding the season through. So uh, welcome to the team. Yeah, thanks. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Cubs are 1-0 and officially since I joined the Cubs baseball <laughs> channel. So I hope to keep that going. Yeah, me too. Me too. What a great what a great start. All right, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and we will do it again tomorrow unless something big breaks. And maybe you'll see us again today. Go Cubs. Yeah.